Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive with us. Today we're going to be digging into how artists can actually, you know, make a living from their art. Okay. We had a listener send in this really cool podcast called Money and Art. Yeah. So we're going to be checking that out, uh, see what kind of golden nuggets we can pull out of there. Sounds good to me. Yeah. You know, one of the things that struck me right off the bat with Money and Art was that they weren't afraid to address like the elephant in the room, which is the business side of art. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. A lot of artists maybe kind of shy away from that, but they really dove right in saying that approaching art with a business mindset can actually be really, really good for your creative process. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't open up a bakery without figuring out like how much to charge for a cake first. right? Yeah, exactly. So why should art be any different? That's exactly the analogy that uh, Mayer, the host, uses. He's like, look, if you want to treat your art as a business, that means you got to understand, you know, who your market is, how to price your work so that it's fair to you, how to market yourself effectively, all that good stuff. And that's where things get really interesting to me because then they start talking about all these different ways that artists can make money these days. Right. And some of them weren't even around like a few years ago, like NFTs. NFTs. Yeah. I'll be honest. I was a little confused about those at first. Sure. But the way that money and art explained it, it finally like clicks for me. Okay. Yeah. It's basically like owning the original digital file of a piece of art Mm. like not just a copy but the actual like digital original Mm. that's huge oh yeah absolutely especially you know when you think about how much art is digital now right i mean that's that's a really powerful concept and it makes sense because they were explaining how nfts are connected to like the blockchain Mm. which i'm still trying to fully wrap my head around sure but basically it just means that it's way more secure You know, you can prove that you own it. Authenticity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's not just about like supporting an artist financially. It's like owning a piece of art history, which is really cool. It's like an investment almost. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But NFTs are obviously not like the only way that artists can make money online these days. Right. Money and art talked about other platforms like Selfie, which I hadn't heard of. Yeah. Selfie. Interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah, so Selfie is really cool. Basically, it gives artists like their own little online store without having to like, you know, build a whole website from scratch and all that. Right, right. So they can sell digital downloads like art prints or design templates, even online courses all in one place. So it's like a one-stop shop for artists to sell their stuff. Pretty much, yeah. And the thing that Money and Art pointed out is that these platforms aren't about, you know, getting rid of galleries or anything like that. Mm. It's more about just like, giving artists more ways to reach people who want to buy their art you know more options exactly yeah more options is always good sure but it's easy to get caught up in all that exciting stuff yeah and forget about the kind of less glamorous side of you know actually running an art business it's boring stuff yeah like taxes oh taxes right because nobody wants to think about that Mayor and his guests definitely don't shy away from it, though. They're like, look, you got to be on top of your finances. Yeah. Having separate bank accounts, you know, one for your business and one for personal stuff. Right. And then, of course, setting aside money for taxes. See, that's something that I'm always like, Ugh, I really need to be better about that. It's so easy to forget. It is. Especially when you're like in the creative zone, you know? Yes. <laughs> but Money and Art made a really interesting point about that. They were saying that actually good financial planning can lead to more artistic freedom, which I thought was cool. Okay, I'm not sure I follow. How does like budgeting and stuff give you more freedom? Well, think about it this way. If you're not constantly stressed about money, right? you have so much more mental space to just like be creative. Mm. You can take more risks with your art, try new things. Yeah. You might even be able to say no to projects that aren't really your style. Which is huge. Totally. Yeah. Because you're not like desperate for the income. It's like that safety net we were talking about earlier, but for your money. Exactly. Exactly. And that frees you up to make bolder choices. Makes sense. And even, you know, invest back into your art, both with your time and your actual money. So buying those fancy art supplies isn't just retail therapy. Sometimes, yeah. No, but seriously, it's an investment in your growth as an artist. I like that. Like any other business, you gotta put money back into it to see it grow, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Money and art didn't just talk about the practical stuff though, right? They talked about mindset. Totally, yeah, because your mindset plays a huge role in whether you actually like make money from your art. For sure, yeah, for sure. What did they have to say about mindset? Well, one thing that really stuck with me was this idea of, like, you're got to find your artistic voice. Okay. And then, like, 
have the confidence to actually share it, you know? Yeah, that's way easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely a journey. Right. And Money and Art pointed out, you know, it can be scary putting your art out there for the whole world to see. Oh, totally. Especially these days where it's like so much stuff online already. It's overwhelming. But they had this guest on and she was saying how important it is to just like focus on your own unique perspective. Right. Like, yeah. what's the story that you want to tell through your art? I like that. That's what people are going to connect with, you yeah. know? It's so easy to get caught up in comparing yourself to other artists. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, especially with social media. It's like a highlight reel of everybody else's best work. Exactly. But the truth is, like, nobody else can be you. Right. And that's your superpower. That's what makes your art special. Okay, so you need to find your voice, have confidence, and not compare yourself to others. Exactly. And then, you know, once you've got that foundation, it's all about connecting with people, building a community. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's not enough to just create in a vacuum anymore, is it? Not really. I mean, think about it. Yeah. The art world is so different now than it was, like, even 10 years ago. Right. So much of it is online now. Exactly. And there are all these amazing platforms like Patreon, for example. Okay, yeah. Money and Art talked about Patreon. I've heard of it, but I'm not exactly sure uh, how it uh, works. So basically, it's a way for artists to, like, share their work directly with their fans and get paid for it. So they can offer things like behind-the-scenes content, early access to new work, even just like personal updates and stuff. It's like a membership, but for art. Exactly. And people can choose how much they want to support the artist each month. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's a win-win because artists get that financial stability. Right. And fans get to be more involved in the creative process. It's like having patrons, but instead of kings and queens, it's like regular people who just love your art. Exactly. I love that analogy. Me too. It's kind of like democratizing art in a way, don't you think? Totally. So yeah, money and art really painted a picture of an art world that's more accessible and more connected than ever before. And potentially more lucrative. Absolutely. Though it still takes work, obviously. Yeah, yeah, first, yeah. But the opportunities were definitely there if you know where to look and you're willing to put in the effort. It's really inspiring to hear about all these different ways that artists are like forging their own paths these days. It really is. And for me, that was like the biggest takeaway from money and art. What was that? Don't be afraid to dream big and go after what you want. Because you never know. Your art could be the next masterpiece. Exactly. Well, this has been an amazing deep dive. So much great information from money and art. I know, right? It's really got me thinking. Me too. And that's what it's all about, right? For sure. So to all our listeners out there, keep creating, keep exploring. And we'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.